Hey what's up guys, today I want to cover 5 star weapons and how good they actually are. I see so many people hyping up every new weapon banner, people desperately pulling for 5 star weapons, and always asking me if their current weapon is good enough or if they should pull on a weapon banner if they should get the new 5 star, so today I want to look at just how good they are. The way I'm going to do this and what we're going to do in this video is on one hand test the differences between 4 star weapons and 5 star weapons, you know test how much damage they deal, also show some of the math that's been done behind it, showing just how much damage a 5 star weapon can increase your potential on specific characters, and then we'll also talk about about the factors that can influence this like okay are you buying the battle pass what are your alternatives and just how big of an upgrade the five star weapon can be depending on what your alternative weapon is i do want to say a few things number one obviously five star weapons in general on average will give you more stats have a higher base attack and or secondary stat to where they are very strong that being said there are a lot of really good four star weapons that can come close and sometimes even out dps five star weapons a good example would be like a refined stringless and so how good or how worth a five star weapon is can highly depend on Many different factors and so i want to go into more detail in this video by looking at many different examples and showing you exactly how much of an upgrade this can be on certain characters and in general before i begin i want you guys to know as always that i do stream most nights on twitch although i have been quite busy recently so sorry about that but link in the description if you're interested and with that being said let's get into it okay so in order to do this comparison the first thing i want to do is look at a good five star weapon on a few different characters and compare it to like their best four star options their best five star versus the best four star show how much damage increase it'll give us just to basically visualize how good it is for you to then determine if it is worth your primo gems. Now, as I mentioned in the intro, this varies highly from character to character. For example, Staff of Homa is amazing on every polearm user, but for someone like Hu Tao, it'll be even better because it's the staff that was basically made for her. This is why, like, the exact character you're using can matter, the other four star options you have can matter. But with that being said, I do just want to get into it and break down just how much of a DPS increase this can be. And so, to show off the difference between five star and four star weapons, I'm actually going to do it by testing this on two extremes on one character who really wants a five star weapon and who gets a really big upgrade from her free to play options from her four star options with the best in slot five star staff of homa on hutao and on the flip side with the same uh, type of weapon with pole arms, I'm also going to show you how Shangling doesn't really need a five star. Yes, they're still good, but since the free to play option, the four star option is so broken on this character, I'm going to show you guys the difference in, you know, Shangling's damage on a, the catch versus Homa, and the same thing with Hu Tao using Homa versus another four star option like Deathmatch and others that we'll get into. I'm going to split this video into a few sections. I'm going to show you guys footage of me testing different weapons so you can see the numbers. We're also going to show the math behind specific characters whose weapon rankings we've calculated so you guys can see the actual true numbers behind it okay so the first tab build we're doing is with staff of homa my ratio is 78 to 39 and while I'll try to keep the same crit rate or similar crit rate on both builds, obviously, uh, like a weapon like Staff of Homa will give us more crit damage, which will make crits look bigger. But that's why I'm reinvesting into crit rate. If that makes sense, like Deathmatch that gives me crit rate, I'll go for more crit damage to try to keep a balanced ratio. Uh, yeah, so 78 to 39 with 79 elemental mastery. All right, so the only thing I'm going to do in this challenge, uh, other than just use Futao, is use my Sing Chu's Rain Swords just so that I can vaporize because that's realistic. And then we'll do a charge attack here and you guys will see. Boom, a Vaporize did 32,000. I'll do another. 32,000 again, 32,000 again. So that's how much we we're doing with Staff Homa at over 50% HP. All right, so now my Hu Tao's under 50% HP. So my Homa passive proc, so it'll be even better than before. Uh, let's just do the same thing again. Use Sing Rain Swords, apply Hydro. Um, yep, then we Vaporize. Wait, that didn't crit. Boom, 41,000. It looked like, yeah, 41,000 on our Vaporize crits. All right, so now I'm using Kutao with a Deathmatch. I swap my weapon, and I also swap my Circlet to a more... Uh, I went from a crit rate one to a crit damage one, while trying to keep similar substats, so a similar level of investment, but obviously going for a crit damage Circlet, since Deathmatch does give me a ton of crit rate. All right, so now my Hutao is under 50% HP. On a Deathmatch, I'm going to test the charge attack damage once again. Let me just apply Hydra to these guys. Go to my Hutao, under 50% HP, do a charge attack. As you guys can see, 32,100... Oh, wait, wrong enemy. Uh, 32,149 every time I crit on a Vaporize. And so my Hu Tao lost about 9k damage, going from 41,000 on the Staff of Homa, all the way down to 32,000 on the Deathmatch. And like, that damage that we lost was on every single charge attack. We also lost a lot of attack, a lot of HP, so that just kind of goes to show how important Homa is, or how big of an upgrade it is for Hu Tao. Actually, here's the exact weapon ranking, and as you guys can see, Homa versus an R1 Deathmatch, so what I have, against two or more enemies, will increase the damage quite significantly. This graph was calculated based on the free-to-play weapon, so if you're comparing this with the white tab 
Castle, which is your free to play option if you don't have a Blacklift full. Staff of Homa at Refinement 1 will deal 41% more damage, 141% of the White Tassel, making it just a super big increase in damage. Now, this is an extreme example, though. I tried to warn you guys about that since Hutao is someone who gets a lot of value from Staff of Homa. But let's look at a counter example. Someone like Shang Ling, who doesn't actually need a five star weapon nearly as much as some of the other characters we'll talk about. Now, to show you what I mean, I'm going to go do a showcase, but let's just look at the numbers first of all. As you guys can see, the difference between a Staff of Homa at over 50% HP because you're running Shang Ling with Bennett, so it's not really realistic to keep her low HP, is very, very, very close to the Catch R5, which is a free to play four star weapon that literally anyone can get. When you think about that, while Staff of Homa is just an amazing weapon, since Shang Ling already has such an amazing free to play option, getting like a 3% damage increase, and yeah, this can change, like these graphs depend on substats, depend on team comps, all that, so it is variable, but getting just a little increase in damage from a free to play 4 star weapon to a 5 star is really not nearly as important as with someone like Hu Tao. This is why it's very character dependent and also substat dependent. A key thing to note with something like the catch is this weapon's only really that good if you can use the energy recharge that it gives you. If your Shang Ling, for some reason, has an ungodly amount of energy recharge on her artifacts, maybe you're running an energy recharge sands, the catch will no longer give you as many good stats, since this energy recharge you're gaining will be wasted. The reason it's so good on Shang Ling is because not only is the effect broken, but getting this 45% energy recharge is the equivalent of many substats, because an energy recharge substat is like 4.5 to 6.5%, which means having all of those stats on your weapon will allow you to build more crit, more attack, more offensive stats on your artifacts. It also allows you to go for an attack sands instead of an energy recharge one, especially if you would otherwise need one, because now with the catch, you will no longer need more energy recharge and you can go for more offensive sense. To show you guys the comparison between catch and Homa, I'm going to be using the same artifact set on both. I'm going to build my Shang Ling with an attack percent sands on the catch and an energy recharge one on Homa, since typically Shang Ling does need a lot of ER on her substats anyways, mainly because you want to be able to spam her burst on cooldown, regardless of if you're playing her as a carry or a support. All right, so on my catch build, I am running a uh, 63, 139. I also gain more crit rate from the catch's passive. I have 119 elemental mastery, pretty low attack, but it's fine because we're running her with Bennett uh, and Noblesse Oblige and we're on a four piece emblem with an attack sans. So for testing Shang Ling, I'm gonna be running Bennett because you basically always have to pair them together for reasons I've explained at my Shang Ling guide. So let's just do a normal, I guess, rotation or whatever. Apply Hydro on the enemy like that. And then we'll just use our Pyronado. And as you guys can see, we are vaporizing 27,000 it looks like. Yep, 27,000 uh, on every single vaporize that we are critting. All right, now all I'm doing is switching from this attack sans to this energy recharge sans with very similar substats. This one's actually a bit better, so keep that in mind. And now our crit ratio is actually going to be a lot better because uh, we have more crit damage because we're running Staff of Homa. However, our attack is lower because we're running an ER Sands. And if, just for the record, in case people are wondering, yes, you can still run an attack Sands with Homa, obviously, but then you need a lot more energy recharge on your substats to make up for it if you want to be spamming your burst on cooldown, depending on your team, rotation, all that. So for the sake of this test, we're going to be running similar amounts of energy recharge. Uh, as you guys saw, the last one had 189. This one has 186. So very similar uh, stat distribution. Okay, so with Staff of Homa this time, we're going to do the same exact rotation. Bennett, apply Hydro on enemies. Uh, and then... Alright, we are doing... It's not critting. <laughs> 30,000. There, there you go. 30,000 uh, on the Vaporizes. So a bit more than last time. Uh, but as you can see, it's not really that much more, but it is, you know, a bit more. So yeah, in this exact build, we went from 30k or 27k to 30k by upgrading. However, keep in mind that this is with, uh, yes, a bit better substats on our sands because this one had a bit more attack and crit, whereas this one only had that 20 crit damage, no attack substats, no nothing. And so overall, the Hu Tao upgrade was definitely a lot more noticeable. Whereas for Shang Ling, I wouldn't recommend pulling for Homa if you already have the catch. Now, these are two extreme examples, but how do you use this in the real world? Like, what does this mean, right? What's the point of this video. How good are five stars really? Well, obviously, as with a lot in Genshin, it depends. And that's why I highly recommend you check my weapon ranking section in my specific character guides and when I talk about how good weapons are and when I give exact weapon rankings. But with that being said, let me show you other examples of other characters to give you more ideas. I do want to mention that for hyper carries, characters like Eula, characters like Xiao, characters like Hu Tao that are dealing the most of their team's damage scale really well with five star weapons. For these characters, the difference between running their free to play option, for Xiao, that's literally... Um, uh, something like Black Lift Pole if you have it, and if you don't, you're kind of struggling. Or if you buy the Battle Pass, a Deathmatch, and a 5-star weapon like Homa or Jade Spear is pretty big. 
Well, I think Deathmatch is really good for Shao and definitely a good option, Jade Spear or Homa will give you more damage. Once again, I can show you guys the difference. Now, while testing the numbers isn't fair because Deathmatch gives you more crit rate, whereas Jade will give you a ton more attack. And so obviously, like visually, you can't really tell that you're getting more crit rate if I just show you two big numbers. But in order to not have a misleading showcase that I see a lot of other people doing, when I switch to a weapon that has higher crit rate, I'm going to convert the extra crit rate into crit damage, since that's basically what it's saving you, right? If you gain 10% crit rate on a weapon, you don't have to build 10% more crit rate. You are therefore allowed to invest into more damage, Whereas if you're running a lower crit rate weapon, you'll still need that whatever 10%, 15% that you'd be losing out on in this case. So to not overcomplicate things, basically what I'm going to do is when I'm running Jade Wings Spear, I'm going to use my normal artifacts. And when I'm using Deathmatch, I will give my Shao a bit more crit damage, basically the equivalent of crit rate that I'd be gaining here, since I can't show that in a showcase, since a big number is just a big number, even if you're on one crit rate, I will be giving my Shao the equivalent amount of crit damage to make it more fair. And so first of all, here's my Shao with Deathmatch, just doing a normal plunge attack. And now here's the footage using Jade spear obviously i'm stacking it at the start to get the passive going and then i'm doing a plunge and the damage does increase significantly especially when my shadow does not have any buffs now i do want to add that that comparison isn't exactly fair which is why i'm going to be doing two more this time using bennett as well since shao is a character who's usually run with uh, attack boosting supports because he gains so much damage percent and since uh when you're running deathmatch with characters to make up for the low base attack you oftentimes want to run a character who buffs your attack that's not really the point of this video but i don't want to be misleading so here are once again a different uh, set of showcases here's my shout with deathmatch and bennett as you can see the plunge number went way up and now here it is with bennett and jade spear and while bennett definitely helped out deathmatch the damage difference is still pretty big for a hyper carry like shao this is also what's going to be happening on every single plunge to everything around you so it's definitely a number that does add up now to once again show you guys basically that shangling was an exception let's look at another character who can use the catch quite well and that character is raiden the catch is an amazing four star weapon for raiden and what i oftentimes will use on her and while the catch is competitive with some five stars not being that far behind or even better than some of the five stars as i'll show you when you compare it to her signature weapon it is definitely quite a lot worse as you can see from once again numbers on screen because i don't have the engulfing lightning all the numbers i show are assuming like a good rotation with specific artifact sets and all that but it is enough to show you the difference from your best five star weapon and your best four star weapon or best free to play option engulfing lightning even at r1 can do even 30 percent more damage than the catch which while it might not be worth pulling for since the catch is already really good is definitely a big increase Increase. Lastly, I do want to talk about Beto because she is a pretty good example of when 5 star weapons aren't really needed. While Wolf's Gravestone is her general best in slot, when you run her with a Bennett and you do stack your Serpent's Spine, it can even out DPS it or at least be very competitive. I'm going to show you guys what I mean with a quick demonstration, although do keep in mind my Serpent's Spine is Refinement 3, so that's something to note. But basically, while Wolf's Gravestone is amazing because it gives you a ton of attack, increases your attack as well with the effect, and then buffs your whole party when you attack an opponent who's low HP, making it really, really good and usually the best once the passive proc since it buffs your off-field supports like a sing chu maybe official if you use oz after the effect procs so it's just like a really good claimer overall claimer users typically have really good options or at least one amazing one if you do buy the battle pass to where wolf's gravestone is a massive upgrade to a free-to-play option whereas the difference between a wolf's and a serpent spine if you do run an attack buffing support like bennett to make up for the low base stack of serpent spine is honestly not that big at all and serpent spine can actually outshine it in certain situations all right so to test this out i'm going to be using similar artifacts once again serpent's fine on this ratio right here and we're gonna run bennett obviously to help with the base attack all right, so now let's go. What I did before I started the abyss was I made sure my serpent spine stacked. As you can see, I have five stacks because you can just literally wait right here. Uh, and then I'll make sure I snapshot all of my buffs to my Beto. Boom. And you'll see every discharge I do will be dealing 14,600 uh, if it crits. Yeah, so 14,000 if it crits. And obviously it snapshots so I can leave the Bennett circle or whatever. Uh, and yeah. All right, now I put Wolf's Gravestone on my Beto. Uh, I just changed her circuit from a crit damage one to a crit rate one. And then since this one was better, I downgraded my feather, basically making the stats uh, pretty close to the same. Although serpent spine obviously will have have a lot more crit because Serpent's Mind does give me crit. And I'll show you guys that while Wolf's Gravestone's passive will buff my team, my Beto's damage will actually be lower uh, with this new build. All right, so now I'm going to proc Wolf's Gravestone here. All right, and then I'm going to use Bennett's ult and Beto's ult. And now my bursts are going to be dealing. Wait, they're affected by Pyro. Yeah, it just cleansed. On this guy, it's doing 13,080, it looks like. Yeah, 13,080 when it crits. So yeah, it's actually doing less than Serpent's Mind, although 
do keep in mind this is with a Bennett, who will give me a lot of attack, which is why Servant Spine is better here. Okay, so here's the recap of what we just saw. I'm gonna put a couple images on screen that shows the number difference from a five star weapon to the four star weapon I was using. Obviously, this varies a lot based on the character I was using, but it does go to show that the damage difference can be pretty big, with some exceptions like Shang Ling. Now, this is just one test using my own artifacts and a small sample size, right, of just like one or two attacks. Here are what the numbers say for a lot of these characters. I know there's a lot of numbers on screen, so let me break it down. These are the weapon calcs from some of my previous videos, comparing basically every weapon for those characters. And as you guys can see, when we look at like Hu Tao, when we compare the Staff of Homa to like White Tassel or even Deathmatch, the difference is very significant. And same with quite a lot of characters, especially if they have a specific five star weapon that was made for them. Now, one thing to keep in mind though is let's say we look at still Hu Tao for an example. While Staff of Homa is the weapon designed for her, every other five star honestly isn't that good compared to four stars. Deathmatch at just R1 is competitive with every other four star, potentially better than all of them, right? Only Jade Wing Spear can be better. And so I do want to say that four star weapons, battle pass weapons can be very good and even better than a lot of the five stars. Although usually a character's best five star or the one that was designed for them is typically their best by far. Another example of this that I didn't really show in this video is Child. I'll put Child's weapon ranking that we calculated on screen. While all five star weapons are really good for him and he does get a lot of value from five stars, right? Because he has a lot of mixed damage. And so having a high base stack, having high stats will really help him. A lot of the four star options out there are pretty good for him. A good example of this is Viridescent Hunt for the battle pass option being really, really good for Child. And then even the free to play options like Hamayumi is okay. And Prototype Crescent, if you can hit a weak point, can also be very good for Child. So with all that being said, well, how good are five star weapons? And should you spend your gems on them? Well, personally, I am a huge fan of battle pass weapons. As you guys know, I think if you're going to spend money on anything in terms of like an upgrade to your account, other than maybe Welkin, battle pass is definitely the biggest upgrade, especially when you compare battle pass weapons to free to play weapons on most characters. Now, the jump from these weapons or a good refined gacha four star weapon to a five star can vary highly depending on the character and a few other factors. For example, if we look at Jade Cutter, this is a weapon that's universally amazing and good on basically everyone. But a counter example of a weapon that's very specific and not that good would be the Everlasting Moonglow. While it can be okay on Kokomi, it doesn't really have any other characters that I can work for on top of the fact that Thrilling Tales is a free catalyst. This is why you always have to know for who you're pulling your weapons on and if they're good or not because catalysts, for example, basically every support catalyst will want to just go Thrilling Tales instead of a offensive five star weapon. On top of that, for catalyst users specifically, even someone like Ningguang who wants to build damage, while Skyward Atlas or Lost Prayer can be their best in slot, if you have a good gacha four star that has refinements like Widsith or even just a battle pass option like Solar Pearl, it honestly isn't recommended to go for a five star catalyst just for that small upgrade. My general advice is to go for weapons if you are planning on pulling for a five star for characters that you know you're going to main or use for a long time or weapons that are universal. This is why I believe Homa, since it's a weapon that yes, is made for Hu Tao, is still so amazing because it's universally good on every single polearm user. And so yeah, while the answer is it depends, typically five star weapons are just very good, but they aren't always better than four star options. As we saw, the catch for Shang Ling is honestly competitive, if not better than a lot of five star options. So five stars aren't always better, but on average, in general, they are very good, mainly because you get more stats and typically a very good effect that your character can synergize with. Now, lastly, I feel like I have to include a very quick section basically regarding weapon banners and whether or not they're worth it. While I think it can be very advantageous, as we saw, to get a five star weapon for specific characters, right? Especially universal ones. I do still think on average, in general, weapon banners are kind of a scam because there's no real hard pity until you get two wrong five stars. They can be incredibly expensive. And if you don't want both of the five stars on the banner, I do think the one time that the weapon banner can be worth it, or at least more worth it than, you know, previously, depending on your budget and whatever, is if you want all the weapons or at least all the five stars on the weapon banner. If you want both of the five stars and you can use both of them, even if you don't get like the main one you're looking for, especially if the four star weapons are good and have good refinements. That being said, I'm someone who doesn't wish on weapon banners a lot. I do get a few when I really want the weapon for a character that I'm playing, but in general, I would much rather, especially for lower budget players, recommend you spend on characters you like. And I rarely recommend weapon banners, but obviously it does depend on uh, the weapons that are featured. And if you do want both five stars, that can greatly increase how worth it is for you. So yeah, that's about it for this video. Five star weapons, pretty good in general. Depends on the character, depends on a lot of things, but five star weapons are very good, but not needed by any means. And so through this video, I did try to show you guys basically the damage showcase, the damage difference between four star weapons and five star weapons, show you guys the calcs behind it, how much of an increase you'll expect on certain example characters, and then also test it with a showcase to show you guys 
you know, what it looks like in practice in game with my artifacts. So yeah, that's about it. I hope you enjoyed. If there's anything I want to add, it will be in a pinned comment. So be sure to check that. It's a bit of a newer type of video for me. So if there are any improvements, any, you know, suggestions, be sure to leave them in the comments. I will be reading most of them. If you're new, be sure to follow me on Twitch, subscribe, obviously a like if the video helped you out. You already know. And with all that being said, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.